The dark ages of motors has been over for a few years now with Make Test Battle helping us bring us out of the abyss of searching on AliExpress and eBay for a good motor source. And now Foam Blast has entered the market with two options of their own, the Michelle 2.0 and the Fang. And that is what we're gonna be checking out in this video. Now, I know I'm behind the release of these because as Sir Pedals would say, I am unreliable. I mean, just look at my upload schedule, but whatever, we're gonna be taking a look at these motors in depth and seeing what they're capable of. Before we start the review, I'm going to be talking a lot about torque, and I feel like it needs to be explained to some of my viewers so they can understand it a bit better. Torque is not the measurement of how fast will a motor fling a dart, but more of a measurement of motor startup, uh, motor RPM recovery, and can also be related to motor braking if you put that into your circuit. Torque is really important in applications where either you're using higher crush cages, maybe some bigger wheels, or if you're gonna be using a full auto blaster where the time between shots is really short. To help give you an idea of why torque is important, we're gonna be checking out three motor combinations. And what we're listening for is both motor sag or the RPM of the motor dropping during the shooting phase and the recovery time after the mag is empty, how fast those motors kick back up to full max RPM. The first example is a rapid strike with stock motors running on three IMRs. Stock motors have very little torque and IMRs don't really have the amperage capabilities to give motors the amperage that they need. The second example is a Rhino rapid strike running off a LiPo. The Rhinos have more torque than stock motors and the LiPo can deliver the amperage needed to help those motors kick back up to full rev quickly. And the third rapid strike has fangs for the flywheels and an overvolted Wolverine in the pusher. This was the fastest rate of fire combination that I could make, and it definitely shows off the fangs torque, which we'll get into later. Just listen to how fast the fangs rev back up to max RPM once the drum is empty. So fast. That is the power of torque. And with that explanation of torque out of the way, we're gonna start the main part of this video, checking out the Michelle 2.0. Foam Blast 2S 130-size motor option. The Michelle 2.0 boasts 33,000 RPM, 358 gram four centimeter stall torque, and 18.8 amp stall current per motor. A. Hell Kelly made a great graph that shows stall torque and RPM of motors. I'll have a link in the description if you want to get it for yourself. But on the graph, Michelle 2.0 sit under blade 180s in terms of torque, 358 versus 429 gram four centimeters, and sit slightly behind make test battle rhinos and RPMs, 33,000 versus 36,000. And out of all the 130 size motors, Michelle 2.0s have the most torque. Now I won't be doing a shooting test for Michelle 2.0s because Brit Nerf user Devera has already done that. He shot an average of 108.3 FPS in a stock cage with stock wheels, 109.9 with a red cage and stock wheels, and 127 to 130 with red cage and worker wheels between two tests. So what do all the numbers for the Michelle 2.0 mean? It means that the Michelle 2.0 is the best 130 on the market right now and is perfect for those of you who do not want to cut your shell. If you're looking to make a sleeper build or a near sleeper build or you just want to put more power into a blaster that might be rare like a Stinger Raven, this motor is definitely for you. The next motor from Foam Blast is the Fang, a 132 size motor. Um, I put that in air quotes because it's not really a 132, it's more like an FK160 according to Mabuchi stuff, but we call it a 132, and that just means it sits between the size of a 130 and a 180. The specs for the Fang are 33,000 RPM, just like the Michelle 2.0, 808 gram four centimeter stall torque and 26 amp stall current per motor. And on A. Hell Kelly's graph, the Fang comes in above Hellcats, 808 versus 740 gram four centimeter stall, while keeping its stall current close, 26 versus just under 24, which is very nice. This is partially due to the Fang's impressive magnets that help give the motor its high torque within a smaller size, as Foam Blast has demonstrated in a video where they suspend 13 of them from one motor. Just like with Michelle 2.0s, I won't be doing a chronograph shooting because Foam Blast has already done all the hard work for me, and I'll have a link in the description to the spreadsheet where all the information is. Foam Blast got a 109 FPS average in a stock cage with stock wheels, 125 FPS with a red cage and worker wheels, and 163 FPS with an OFP 4.15 cage and worker wheels. 
Now, as I said earlier, higher torque does not necessarily mean higher FPS. That still has to do with RPM. But what that last reading shows is what higher torque can give you. A higher crush cage just means the wheels are closer together and crush the darts through them. And in order to use a really high crush cage like the 41.5 from OFP, you really need a high torque motor in order to push that dart through it. Think of it like the rival rounds where they literally get squished. It's doing the same exact thing, but 163 FPS from a flywheel blaster is incredibly impressive. And that's what you can get with a super high torque motor like the 132 Fang. Unlike Michelle 2.0s and 130 size motors, you may have to cut the shell in order to accommodate fangs because they are a bit taller. Some people have said they've gotten away without cutting the shell and they were able to fit the wiring and the motor in there, but I would highly recommend cutting your shell to give the wire more room and to prevent any sort of uh, solder getting onto the top or crushing your wires against the side, which can cut them open and short out to the motor, which can lead to a lot of problems. Now, if you do decide to cut your shell, the cool thing about 132s is that the covers for them are very, very small and very stock looking. So if you still wanna make a sleeper build, it will still pass for a sleeper. They're very, very small because the 132 isn't as large as a 180, which needs a higher cover to it. So it's not gonna look like a protruding mess. It's gonna look very stockish. Now, the only problem with that is right now, as of making this video, there aren't 132 covers available in mass, and we're still waiting on people to put them out. But Foam Blast has said that they are working on that. So that may change by the time you watch this video as I almost dropped the motor. Now, before we get to the conclusion of this video, there was a complaint circulating around on Facebook that the fang could arc out out of the motor, possibly onto metal cages that you put it into, which is both dangerous and really odd sounding. So I decided to take my own sciency methods and put it to the test to see if it would actually arc. For my small test, I made a simple circuit connecting my LiPo to a single fang with a switch in between them. I put E-tape around the motor and put it above some aluminum that I had. Nothing from the motor was touching the aluminum and the wires were covered with liquid E-tape to make sure they weren't shorting to the cage. If there were to be an arc not related to the wiring fault, such as a cut in the wiring sleeve or solder touching something, this would be good enough to produce a spark. I saw no sparks and no markings on the aluminum to indicate a spark. If my science methods didn't convince you, which I would not be surprised if they didn't, I reached out through my personal Facebook and into some Discord groups asking people who have knowledge in the area and possibly degrees as well, if it is possible for a motor such as the Fang to arc onto a metal surface in a cleanly done circuit, which is the key point, a cleanly done circuit, meaning that there's no solder touching the can or any sort of wiring fault going on. The responses from these people were a mixture of highly unlikely and no, and I'll have all their little explanations at the end of this video. So if you had any fear of this motor or really any motor jumping onto a metal surface, such as a metal cage, you have nothing to fear. And the claim is basically BS and most likely due to a wiring fault on the user's end. And with that BS out of the way, let's get to the conclusion of this video. If you haven't guessed it yet, these motors rock a 130 size motor that has more torque than the beloved legendary blade 180 and a 132 size motor a motor smaller than a 180 that is fairly above the hellcat these motors are incredibly awesome and are ready to put so much power into your build with no cutting to very little cutting. And on top of that, the Michelle 2.0 is $3 per motor and the Fang is $7 per motor, which puts incredible competition into the market. The only problem I have with these motors has to do with just the Fang 132. And that is what I said earlier, the lack of availability of 132 size covers as of making the video. That's the only problem I have with these. Other than that one complaint, which is definitely a small one and will be remedied out in the future, I am proud to say that these motors are both getting Boba must buy awards. One for the Fang, one for the Michelle 2.0. Not only because they have such incredible power in a small form, but because they're priced really well and they're giving more options to the market, which I love, as you guys know I love. And also Foam Blast cares about their customer satisfaction, which is awesome to see. All that means Boba must buy awards for these motors. So if you hate cutting shells in order to get more power, or if you don't mind cutting your shell just a little bit to still have a sleeper-ish look, these motors are definitely for you. They are awesome options, and I cannot wait to put these in some of my builds in the future. As always, I'll have links in the description below to where you can buy these, as well as links to the spreadsheets if you wanna check out the FPS readings for yourself. And a huge thank you to all those who helped with my question about the arcing problem, especially to those guys at the Britner forum slash Discord server. You guys rock. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a great day wherever you are.